How is everyone today? Good. Great. Good. Well, welcome to CSL Kauai. I am Reverend Patrick and the co-spiritual director of this center. And co-spiritual director means that there would be someone else. <laughs> And so she would usually sit right there where I have put a wonderful seat for her. Um, that is the wonderful Reverend Rita, who is the co-spiritual director of this, and my wonderful wife as well. So this is a very special moment because we are live streaming. So for those of you who do not know what that really means, it means that what happens in Kauai no longer stays in Kauai. And uh, right now, Rita is in Florida. And she is watching with her family, so I think we should say an aloha to Reverend Rita, yes? Yes! Okay, everybody? Aloha! Yes, indeed. Okay, back to me. Uh, <laughs> so, today is a wondrous, wondrous day because we are all here and we decided to show up. And that's, it. that's, that's where we all start. So, I do have a few announcements I want to make. Um, Kamalani Playground Cleanup is on April 18th, and every year we really like to um, get involved in that because we use the park a lot, and it's just a wonderful thing. So if you can, there's a sign up back there, and we kind of get out there as a team, and they have lunch at 12, and they really stay on time, and that's the beauty of it. I um, mean, if they say get out at 12, you actually do get out at that time. Um, as you know, we are looking for a new home. Um, to have more as a full-time presence here in Kapa'a or wherever it may end up, but that's the central focus. And we're doing that um, slowly but surely, but I'm feeling on a daily basis, I can feel the consciousness of this center being here so that during the day, you could say, oh, I think I'll go walk the labyrinth, or during the day I'm gonna go do this, and, and, and it's just a nice place to call home all the time. Uh, we have a wonderful Tuesday celebration in Princeville uh, that I am facilitating, and it's our healing, we call it a healing service, but it's celebration of spring, it's a lot of things, but um, Carrie and Michael Fox are going to bring their singing bowls, and we're going to do a whole bunch of really infusion like we did last month for the uh, spiritual mind treatment. Um, we have some new classes coming up that are open to everyone, and that would be spiritual economics, and that's going to be on Wednesday, April 8th, and that's going to be in Lahue on a Wednesday. I'm looking at someone who likes Wednesdays and likes La Um So anyway, that's happening uh, next month along with our foundations, which will be on the 8th, 9th, 10th um, of April. So sign up is back there. And let me see, Easter Sunday is coming up next week. And we celebrate very differently here at Centers for Spiritual Living uh, because we have a very special um, thing from Reverend Rita, so I can't give it away, especially since she's watching. Um, so um, please come celebrate, put on your Easter bonnets and all that kind of stuff. We, we don't do a lot of asking every you know week going, oh, we're having this fundraiser, we're having this fundraiser, but we do have one twice. We have two a year. One is the Sacred Retreat, which most people don't know is a fundraiser, and then the um, other one we do is for our birthday. We are turning our our wonderful, terrific twos in July, <laughs> and uh, we have a, a program now, a fundraiser called Over the Rainbow to the Pot of Gold. And so we have the Pot of Gold to CSL Kauai, and then people out in the video world that we're looking at now, and everybody here, you are the gold. So you can go to the website, www cslkawaii.org, and we have a whole little thing in there, and we'll put your name on the little gold coins, and it's really fun. Um, so I think that that is it for me. I would like to um, ask Marion, because uh, would you come up and light the uh, peace candle for us, please? We also have a peace candle that we light every week. And in this teaching and in this philosophy, we don't wait for something to happen. It starts with us first. So we are going to start with peace for us, and we will light the candle for peace, and uh, we do that every week. And when that candle goes down, we'll just get another candle, and we'll keep doing it until we know the truth. Because in the mind of spirit, God, it's already happened. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now let's just take a moment to just settle in for our time of centering, for our time of... 
Oh, just contemplation, meditation. And I have a little seed thought since this month is all about planting. Nature herself does not distinguish between what it receives and what is planted. It grows whatever is planted. This is the way life works. Be mindful, I repeat, be mindful of the seeds you plant today as they will become the crop you harvest. Enjoy your time.
Nature herself does not distinguish between what seed it receives. It grows whatever seed is planted. This is the way life works. Be mindful of the seeds you plant today, as they will become the crop you harvest. So just allow your senses to come alive. Mm. I'm here to remind you of your magnificence to help you away. I know is that that is where we start right here right now and that is with love that is our identity that is who we are at all times so I know that today is by divine appointment that this is on purpose this time together the celebration of the truth of our being and I know that with the music and with the message the meditation and all of your beautiful consciousness I know that it's brought here today that we just move moment to moment accepting and living from one unborn moment to the next and celebrating the truth of who and what we are. So I say mahalo, mahalo to each and every one of us for showing up, for being who we are and having the courage to say, I am that I am. So knowing that this is the truth of my being, I let the law, law do what it does best, and that is to say yes. We say yes together as we say, and so it is now. lullaby, isn't it? I've heard it for so many years, that's why I called it in this very room this morning. No. <laughs> that's another another song that I'm sure we'll sing it sometime. It's okay, it's all good. It's all good at the end of the day. So welcome again for those of you who just walked in. I am Reverend Patrick and Rita, Reverend Rita is in Florida and actually watching right now with her family and she's visiting her mother and they're probably all just staring in and saying, ah, so this is what my daughter does. <laughs> I love it. And we'll end it right there. No. <laughs> so anyway, welcome again. Now, who is here for the very first time? I know I see somebody. Just, you just have to go like that. Just don't, say, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't pay attention. Oh, well, you know. There's... So we have a little something for you. Our wonderful board member, Roseanne, will give that to you. Now, before you open that envelope, I'm kidding. You know, you can open it later. But we do have something. I know you're going to find this surprising. We do know something about you. And we would like to actually uh, tell you that. What do you guys think? We know something about you? Yeah? And what is that? You are magnificent. <laughs> but you knew that, yes? Yes. 
Uh, well, the reason we know that about you is because what? We know it about ourselves. Because we cannot give anything. It is so apparent we can't give anything unless we, it's coming from ourselves. And so knowing that, what do we say? I am magnificent. Yes, and just, just look whoever's next to you and let them know that you're magnificent. You are magnificent. All righty. All I'm going to get really used to this new bell thing going on here. <laughs> oh. One thing that is very clear to me, um, last night we had uh, a viewing of Finding Joe, the yes. movie. And there was about 20 of us there. And I have to tell you, I woke up this morning really understanding what it means to be community and why it's so important. Because it wasn't about really watching the movie, though the movie, the documentary of Joseph Campbell's um, works was just wonderful. But it really was seeing that circle at the end and experiencing how much we need community and how much we require it. And I'm going to ask you, just you know, as a spiritual leader, that when you're in your life, if something is appearing, and I always say appearing, to not be so light and not to be... I uh, can appear to be a little darker than you would want. This is not the time to hide in the cave. Allow your community, allow this community to assist you, to, to love you through it. It was really apparent last night that, that people will say, oh, I'm, I'm just not feeling up to it, because you think you want to show up, right? And you want to zippity doo da. And I like it. Nobody's a bit of doo is better than Patrick. But, uh, but I'm going to tell you, except for Marco, and, but I will tell you that, that this is the time to let us embrace you, and then we will take our turn at it as well. So is that a deal? Yes. yes. Good. Okay, with that being said, I think we need to open this service with our opening song. Jeremy and Amy. <laughs> I read on family. We keep on love, we keep on 
I guess we're getting used to it. I guess I can't really use that line anymore <laughs> going on, on our terrific two years we've been getting up and doing this. So, oh, just taking a moment to land, to just, uh, this is a good, this is good. And you're good. And we deserve to take a moment to remember that. How blessed we are. Not lucky. We're blessed. This is what we are. So, speaking of being blessed, I am very blessed uh, to know this special lady who, who's been here pretty much since the beginning. And I know a lot of times in couples, you always say, you know, Roseanne and Robin Patrick and Rita. Oh, I was had a name. No, I went to that. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Jeremy and Amy. And so I think that this is a time that I just want to just acknowledge Roseanne. Because Roseanne's going to do our In the Light um, today. And she just is a wonderful, wonderful, um, what's, a, what's a spiritual word? Firecracker? <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't matter if we're live streaming or not. I have no filters, and I just have to really just admit to that. So I would like to bring up In the Light with Roseanne Jones. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, Reverend Rita <laughs> and Maria and bomb. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, 35 years ago, my boyfriend took me to the Mile High Church of Religious Science in Denver, Colorado. Now, I had been an, an agnostic for 10 years. None of it made any sense to me. But I knew deep inside I really longed for a connection. When I was there, the minister, um, Dr. Fred Vogt, said something. He said, you don't have to leave your brains in the car to walk into this church. And boy, that sat well with me. So. Since that time, I knew I had a home there. And very soon after that, I started taking Science of Mind, the, the class. And um, that whole beginning shifted my life. And beginning with, I ended up marrying that boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> and he's sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've traveled through um, uh, lots of normal ups and downs throughout those years, but the science of mind principle stayed with both of us whenever we had challenges and had those ups and downs. And um, even when we didn't have an, a church to attend, because we did move around a bit, but we made positive uh, decisions based on those principles. And it led us to retiring on this beautiful island. And then CSL Kauai came to me. And it was another lifeline for us. Rob and I were thrilled to start attending here and finding out what great ministers we have and how they speak the truth here. And we started taking classes. And we, that was a year and a half ago, so we've had many classes since then, 
with the same six people that started. That's sort of amazing to me that all of us have stayed on this journey. Going deeper into your spiritual side means you're willing to really walk that talk and, and take this simple philosophy into your daily life. That journey means that you, you take these steps to actually apply these ideas to your life. If you uh, come here once a week, and if you decide you want more, there are classes. And there's many people in this audience who have taken classes, and I think it'd be a great idea if you'd raise your hand so that people can see who you are and if you have questions about the classes and what it's like to take a class, those are the experts because they can tell you what the classes are like. I wanted to say mahalo to my co-travelers on this journey, on this spiritual journey. You, each of you has, has enriched my life, and I thank you for that. And as Emma Curtis Hopkins says, within each of you, is the song of the spirit. I hope that each of you find your voice and sing your song. Thank you. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. You used the word simple. And because Rita and I usually split up the welcoming, and she usually says a little bit about science of mind, and I just did my part, and that was fine. Um, but I, I thought of something while you were up here, Rosanna. This is simple. Cause and effect sounds a little scientific, but it's really simple. Whatever you plant is what you get. It doesn't take, you don't have to get up extra early to, to figure that one out except for the fact that it's not always seems easy to do. And that's why we're here, but we're really here just to celebrate. And as long as we continue to celebrate who we are, then we will just live magnificent lives. I know that. I know that from the very bottom of my being. So, if there was a bottom, um, which there's not. So, <laughs> let's take a moment here with our wonderful, wonderful Jeremy and Amy, who um, is every week just, we are so blessed to have you and to experience you and to have you as part of this family. And mahalo. Mahalo. This song really needs no introduction.
So, with Rita not being here, we usually divide our time up. So, for all of you who thought you'd get out a little bit early, <laughs> uh, probably not. Um, today, we have, for those of you who are new, but just we're going to do a little review. I know a lot of people don't like reviewing, but we're going to do it because it's always good to look back to see where we've come from and where we're at. So, today we're actually at celebrating the harvest. Yes. Do you like that idea? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so, but, and the whole idea behind celebrating the harvest today is the fact that everything that you have been planting in your mental garden is going to harvest today. Good news? Yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, but let's just take a little trip back this month. This month has all been about how does your garden grow. And we're not talking about the, the garden, this beautiful island, of course, everything grows beautifully. We're talking about our mental garden. And that's really what this philosophy is about. That's really what this whole center is about, is, is, is planting a mental garden that works for our lives, individually and collectively. So we know that with the metaphor of gardening, that what we've done is we have to decide that there's something we want to plant. So we have our mental garden, and some of our mental gardens look really kind of nice, and then others look like well, there's been some weeds that have grown, in, and we haven't taken care of them, and we discussed miracle grow and all of those things this, this month about cleaning it. And we even remember, if you remember correctly, I told you about a person 
who gets all of her garden completely uh, just perfect. All the weeds are gone and everything. It's just looking really nice. And someday she'll plant something. And I really woke up with that idea today thinking, oh my gosh. There's so many different ways to look at how we plant in our mental garden. One is the person who's very, very organized and has everything just perfect, right? Not a weed will show in their world. But then again, no new seeds are being planted. So we've explored this month even the idea that one Sunday when we talked about the hospice worker who explained at the end of some people's life, one of the things that were, was the hardest for them is that they realized that, well, I'll just use the one quote, it says, most people regret that they had not honored even a half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or not made. That was a real cheer pleaser that day. I do remember everyone was quite thrilled about that particular uh, talk. But what I know about that is that, what did I say? We've talked about their messengers for us. That they are saying, oh my gosh, because they're going to be planting some more gardens, because it doesn't end, folks. Life's eternal. We may change a few costumes here and there, but it's eternal. So really what matters is what we're doing right here, right now with our mental garden. And I know a lot of you, it almost sounds sometimes, I was thinking, it sounds like I'm coming in here and, and going, you guys, get your act together, get your garden together. I know you're, you're growing beautiful things in your life. But I think there's a time we still want more, right? I mean, in our garden, we can plant a little simple garden, like we did sometimes behind when I lived in an apartment and put a little thing. But then... We have a whole garden. We have a whole mental field that is what? Unlimited. So we learned that throughout this that there are some good seeds and some not so good seeds. And what at the end of the day, who is responsible for your garden? You are. You are. We discussed this last night. Once we get done with our parents, our teachers, our you know, religions, all the things that did us wrong somewhere and we stop planting that, then we will be planting the things that we really, really want in our life. Sounds kind of like a me, 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 doesn't it? My garden, my garden, my garden. It is my garden. And I realize that a lot of times, especially in this philosophy, we become, a lot of people say selfish, because it's all about my garden. Well, my garden must, must grow before I can help you. It must grow within my own mental universe. We learned that this, that I last week said, there's no such thing as time. And you'll find that out how long this talk goes. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding about that. Uh, but but uh, there is no time in the mind of God. And that is the good news, because that means that we always, always get to start again, should we choose. Then we learn that after you get, what, the weeds are gone, those, those beliefs, we're really just talking about beliefs are gone. Are they gone? Sometimes they sneak back in, do they not? I don't know about you, but I have had some really dynamite clearing, only to wake up the next day to think, oh, my goodness, there you are again. How did you get there, little memory that happened 30 years ago? Oh. Some of you aren't old enough to have 30 years of memory, but, but I actually do. So we've been building this garden, and it's been exciting, but it's been a lot of work, right? Getting hands in there, getting dirty, and you all know that. And some people, actually, get someone to do the gardening for them. Not a good idea in the mental garden. <laughs> because we've actually been doing that for a while, too. I don't think I'll make a decision. You do it for me, yeah. It really works well because I appreciate having a gardener where I live because I'm not really that, yes, you guys know me by now, that I'm not really out there like, come on, Rita, let's go and dig up some things and plant. It's probably not. But in my mental garden, I work a lot in there. And work isn't really the best word to use because someday we'll be joyfully playing in there letting beliefs that are holding us back, to let them go. But it let them go so it can grow. Let it go so it can grow. 
And it sounds like a broken record, but it's okay. Because we need to be reminded of this. Because in reality, we came here with a perfect garden. We came here with spring already sprung. Really hear that. I'm talking to myself too. We came here perfect. So now, we've done some planting, have we not? We've watered it with what? With love. Faith. Oh, faith's a big one, right? Faith's a huge one. And it's so under underused sometimes, or overused is more the word. It's like, I have faith, I have faith. I have faith of a mustard seed, to stay in theme, of course. I have the faith of a mustard seed. I love what Edwin Gaines, she's in the Unity uh, philosophy, and they say, oh, you have so much faith. You have so much faith. I wish I had your faith. And she always says, you do. You just need to choose it. Faith is a choice. It's not, and in the world of material, there is, it's not. Love is a choice. Hating is a choice. All of it is a choice. Now, if you're manifesting a car, you'll know that sucker when it pulls up because it is right there pulling right up for you in your manifestation. But the other stuff, the faith, the belief in yourself, that's why we're self why we're always looking at the self. Because it's there that we can do our stuff. We can't do anything if we don't think we're worth it. And one of my um, mentors, Richard Morgan, who's probably watching in North Carolina right now, he said one of the things, if you'll just remember it, that most things are not manifested because we don't think we deserve them. And every time I try to go around it, loophole it, go, no, there are other, it comes right back down to not fully thinking I deserve to have a garden that's really growing, that I get to actually share with my community as well. That's why we grow a garden. So here's the deal. Now, here's the part we've reviewed a little bit, a lot, actually. So here's the thing. You've got your garden planted. All the weeds are gone. Ah. Oh. I have purpose. I know exactly what I want. I've made the decision. And now my garden is ready. And then what happens? And I know nobody in this room. But you look at that beautiful garden. And you go, look what I did. And I planted prosperity over there. Even got a little, little thing stuck in there to let me know that that's where prosperity is going to be. And then I've got health. Oh, vitality, planted, oh, right now it just looks like dirt, but I'm going to tell you something, there is prosperity and vitality underneath that ground, so then you sit there, and you sit there, and you become discouraged, because you can't see prosperity, you can't see vitality, you can't see the perfect relationship. You can't see your life unfolding perfectly, easily, effortlessly. But Patrick said that all I had to do was plant it and water it. Excuse the spiritual term, but where the hell is it? That's what you're thinking. Don't pretend like you don't. Because I know you like I did I did 17 affirmations. Nine treatments, <coughs> waved at everybody on the island. I was a mirror, of, I was a mental equivalent of joy, joy, joy. You better, where is it? Now you know you've been thinking it at times. Not today, of course, but you've been thinking it. So here we build this great garden and we get really excited, and then it's not showing up. Anybody ever been there? I've been there a few times. You don't have to raise your hand because I already know. No. <laughs> I know there might be a few exceptions floating in the room. but um, So what do I think about that? What do I know about that? What do I do when I plant the garden and I cannot see it? And then the day comes where you go, you get a little manifestation. Like yesterday I was in Princeville and this beautiful, beautiful artist, Sally, she... I talked to her and she said, uh, I just sold a painting today. 
I said, oh my gosh, she goes, and it's my favorite too, and, and they're all her favorites, by the way, I'm sure, but <laughs> as an artist, we all know, and it's just like, you know, you, it's like you're going for adoption, giving it up, and she sold it, and you could tell it was bittersweet, the, the woman called and said, it's hanging there, and I'm happy, and she looked at me, and then she ran over, and she um, pulled out one of her prints of that, and showed it to me, and then gave it to me, and said, this is for you and Rita. I want you to have this. And this is like, if you're planting seeds, right? Of prosperity, abundance. You're going, ah, there's the little, oh, there's the little thing. I see. Oh, it's starting to come up now. So you're even more excited because now we see a little sprout. Oh, there it is of prosperity, abundance, right? I didn't pay for this. She handed me, gave me this. Wow, somebody that is a part of this just gave Rita and I two brand new bikes. There's some perks of being a minister, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> just so you'll know. But they gave it because they were here and they had bought them and then they were leaving. I just, that's the one thing I love about this island, by the way, <laughs> is that people come and go, but then they leave you all their things in the refrigerator <laughs> and they do all this stuff and God only knows what's next. But anyway, it went from, you know, a half a bottle of wine left to us and some cheese to bikes. I mean, things are looking up in the world of Rita and Patrick. So, I digress. <laughs> but not really. Uh, so here is the thing. So we get this little sprout, and then guess what you do? Because that childlike, that childlike little self of yours starts like... Uh, clicking it out around the dirt and stuff. Oh, you guys are only laughing because you know you've been there. It's like, it's like, oh wow, if that happens, next to a filled checking account, ah, you know. And what happens is you start going down there and then you go there and go, oh, no, what's really underneath all that? And then you're messing with the roots. And now it's like going, and then that, 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 that manifestation is sitting down there, that wonderful little sprout going, I can't wait to, because you know it goes to the sun, it goes to the light. Says, I can't wait. What are they doing? They keep pulling at me when I'm trying to manifest this greatness, and they keep doing it. How do you do it? You're not really pulling. You're doing it with doubts and fears. What if it doesn't happen? I've been there. What happens if it doesn't happen? What happens if I've done everything right and it doesn't happen? I'm telling you, it has to happen. It has to happen if you'll get your little fingers out of the dirt. Get your little fingers out from the roots and let it grow. Let it show up in so many wonderful ways. Walking and, and oh, bikes and things and, you know, and I'm talking materialistic now. But, you know, let's not pretend. We're a spiritual society, but we live in a material world. We really do. And there's nothing wrong with it. And if you do think something's wrong with it, then I would guess that maybe a lot of material stuff is probably not appearing for you because this is not, bless you, this is not magic. This is the truth of our being. The message for you today is this. So, you know, I'm not going to leave you. Don't worry, you're going, well, he's just leaving us with this, getting our fingers out of it. What else do we do? I'm pushing this down for this one. <laughs> you prepare. Prepare. A feast. A banquet is being set for you. A banquet of life is being set for you. It's already set. Now prepare. If I was coming over to your house for dinner, oh, if I was coming over to your house for dinner, would you just go, oh, come on over, and then I walk in and you're going, hi, how are you? When you be preparing dinner? So whatever it is in your mental garden, prepare for it. And how do you do that? You prepare by saying, oh, if you're going to move into a house, or you want a house, for instance, you start getting ready for it. The center that we're getting ready for, it's not going to just appear because I did some really fabulous um, treatments. It's going to appear at any time because it's already here. It is faith first, and then demonstration. It is belief first. Now tell me if I'm asking the question, 
ah, I'm not scolding, I'm not scolding. No. If I ask the question to if you ask the question, why hasn't it shown up yet? That negates the whole idea that you trust. You must know that whatever you planted is, is going to grow. You do when you plant carrots and stuff in your garden, don't you? I doubt very, who has a garden in this room and they're at their house. I know you don't get out there and go, I hope they grow. I hope the carrots are coming. I hope they are. You know, you don't wish that. So now we know we have our mental garden. So would everybody be happy today? And you can be honest. Would you be happy with the state of your mental garden today? Or would you go out? Okay, first of all, would you be happy with your garden today? Fully happy? Yeah? Yeah. Now, would you um, think that maybe I needed just a little more spiritual fertilizer or something else to go in there and do, or I just popped up a weed? No, it's a continuous process. That's the good news. This doesn't end with just, oh, I, I got a plant. I got bikes. I'm done. I haven't even ridden the bike since I was eight. But I've got two of them. I've got two of them. And one has a basket on it, too. Just, just saying. It's a very Toto experience for, for, for us. So here's the deal. We have an absolutely wonderful, wonderful thing called our mind. It's the one thing that never cost a thing. We were given this. We were given our, our, our spirituality. We were given, and I've said it before, at the law of our being. And I love this metaphor that I have used my, most of my life, that I wasn't let, dropped off, left alone, ever. I was... This thing called God, this thing called good, hid itself in me. So that if I ever got scared, or if I ever thought it wasn't coming up, that it would say, I'm right here. I'm right here. And I'm growing, and I'm growing, and I'm growing. Get out of the way. Let me grow through you, as you. It's harvest time, folks. I love a party. There's a banquet of life. A banquet. Not a drive-through. Not just something or leftovers. Even though there's nothing better than a nice little leftovers. But your life isn't about being left over. You're royalty. And I'm going to say it again. You are royalty. It is time that we start acting like it. Acting as if. Acting as if. Amen. Rich, you want be, if you want wealth, then start acting like it in everything we do. When I, get those, when I got that picture yesterday, I was beaming. I was like, yes, yes, yes. They looked at me very strange at Foodland. But, and then and you could say, she said, well, just don't lay that down. I said, well, I won't lay it down. Life's good. And we're good in it. So this month we're leaving the um, the month of gardening, but next month, you guys want to like a little clue to next yeah. month? Yeah. Yeah. Rise and shine. <laughs> Rise and shine. Rita's gonna be so upset that she didn't get to say it. <laughs> but, but this is what we we've been working, we've been we've been harvesting now. We know what to do. But do come back again, and I'll have a few other tips for you from week to week. But, but this is the good news. It's time to celebrate now. Celebrate the harvest. Celebrate every single thing we have. Everything. When I get in my car, get in that car and say, thank you. And that's why we say it so much to, to Amy and Jeremy. We Thank you for bringing your beautiful, beautiful music and talent and energy and love to this room on Sundays. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the courage that each one of us has to, to walk through those doors on a Sunday and say, you know what? 
Sometimes it just doesn't make sense, but I'm showing up again. Not for me. Not for Rita. Let's get that really clear. A lot of people, I get some apologies. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not going to be there for you. No, know, no, 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 no. We have to get this clear. I love your consciousness. You feed. We are being soul fed, as our Oprah would say. This is soul food that we're getting here. But you're coming in those doors for you. And I just want to make it clear. We love you and we appreciate you. But we opened these doors so you could be fed and feeding yourself and being taught how to fish. So you can feed yourself and feed everyone else too. So I want you to give yourself a huge round of applause for your career. And last but not least, I'd like to thank myself. <laughs> I know you find that hard to believe, but I do. Somebody said that. Now, I do joke a lot about that in, in closing. I joke a lot about, oh, about Patrick, and he's not afraid to compliment himself. But we were talking about that in class, and it's the one thing that we do not do enough of. Because we weren't taught it. I get up and I say, you know what, Patrick, whatever you do today, I'm with you. I'm your friend. I'm going to be your best friend. Not your enemy. Not the person that says stuff to you. I'm your friend. I'm your best friend. That's where this, all of this fruition, this harvesting comes from. When you can wake up in the morning and we can teach our children and we can teach one another that we're our best friend. And that's why nobody has ever, ever, as I used to say when I worked with the youth, we never found God, we never saw God, because God was hiding right inside of each and every one of us. So if you want to see God, have that mystical experience, go look in the mirror. That's where you'll find God. Namaste. So how does everyone feel now? Great. Oh, good. Good. Oh, I just love this place. So this is our time of, speaking of um, planting, this is our time of affirmative giving. So I want you to take whatever it is that you are going to get, and if it doesn't come in, in paper form or doesn't come in coin form, let it come from your consciousness and hold it to your heart and just say yes 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 because we are prosperity itself and we have an um, affirmation that we use it's in your program and as soon as I find it there we go are you ready divine love consecrates my gift it goes forth to heal prosper and bless it is evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I give freely today, knowing it returns to me abundantly now. Now. Blessed am I, spirit am I, I am the infinite within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. All this I am. I know with eyes wide open that each and every one of us is that expression of good God prosperity we will always be that and there is always God in action moving through and as us at all times so I celebrate 
I celebrate what's in this basket, but I celebrate more what's in these seats and in this world. And know that, that together, as one, we move this prosperity out into the world in every area of our life. From our checkbook, to our relationships, to every single corner of this thing called our life. So I know with the breath of God itself, it moves through this wonderful thing called gratitude. And I just thank you, knowing that it returns multiplied over and over because uh, God is eternal and God is good. As together we say, with such mahalo. And so it is now. So... There was no reason for me to do that, just so you'll know. I just wanted to do that. I mean, Rita's going to be so excited. And guess what? I always believe in this is our thank you time. I'd like to thank Janice. Because Janice suggested this. And the reason why, because we're transparent here at CSL Quiet, is because Rita was sounding like a fishwife, going, you know, everybody, come on in! And, you know, and so this is a ton. Right? Right? I'm not in trouble. Oh my god, the cell phone's ringing. <laughs> but then again, I will put that on myself too. Now, there's nothing wrong with the fish wife. I'm just saying that, that when you're out there screaming, kind of getting everybody together, Janice suggested that it would be really nice if when we had that. And look what it did. Everybody's having a good time. I'm always trying to take away your coffee or your joy. But, but, but when you do that beautiful sound, it's beautiful. So thank you, Dan. Is that would be, yeah. Which, which, goes, which goes to prove that uh, we do listen to what you want here at CSL Hawaii. So some more thank yous. I just want to thank um, this wonderful team that came in the back door today and helped Patrick. As, he was sitting here alone without his, uh, without his wife. And the team came in, that's Michelle and Ron and Dan and Marta, and they just set things up and did so beautiful. But a lot was set up, right? Yeah. Because I got here at 445. <laughs> so Rita was very missed as I was sitting there going, something doesn't feel right. And I'm thinking, why am I doing so much? Oh, Rita's not here. <laughs> so I would like to thank that. I'd like to thank, thank you, Roseanne, for that wonderful In the Light yeah. and the, everything that you do. And um, Rob, for this wonderful picture that looks like we're sitting between, that's our guru of this philosophy. <laughs> which, which I would just like to let everyone know right off the bat, we don't have a guru, and it's not Joe. But Joe is, <laughs> but, but we love Joe. Yeah. And Joe was going to be here today, but he said, but anyway, it's a beautiful picture, and, and all of Rob's work is done with, uh, has prints in it, um, too, so if you ever want to know anything about that, please contact him. Also, I did forget one thing. Um, Jeevan, I don't usually do the announcements um, about, you know, other stuff that's going on in Ireland, but Jeevan is just not, anyway, his family. And he's going to be up at Princeville tonight at 7 o'clock for the uh, curtain. Um, <coughs> I always want to say curtain. Curtain. <laughs> but then people want to call him Javon, right? And it's Jeevan. It's it. So he's going to be there at seven o'clock tonight. So if you want to go up there, please do go support. I'll be there. Not that, that not that that's the big pull. I'll be there. So everybody. Um, so and who else? Had, who who were the other thank yous today? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know. Besides Marco, Marco, thank you so much for everything you do, and happy early birthday. And um, we're, we're live. And we're live. And we're live. Dan, thank you for coming. <laughs> What's that? Thank the people who are watching right now. Oh, but I, I'm not finished with the people in the room yet. Hold on. <laughs> but thank you. For, but thank you for all your direction, everyone. I'm sure I'll be getting notes about this on the. Uh, and last but not least, Jeremy and Amy, thank you so much. And yes. All those people that are watching out there, and I know there's a lot. A lot of people come here, and then they go back, and they're there. And they're just so excited to be able to wake up and have their coffee or whatever they're doing three hours advanced. 
it's three in the afternoon. <laughs> Just kidding. Out. That's the kind of that's the kind of community we have. So I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for your energy. And this feels so great to be connected. It also feels vulnerable in its own way, right? Yes. Because I can always go to uh, Marco and say, Marco, will you do me a favor and edit that part out where I scratch my nose? Um, and here it's live. And guess what? That's good. That's transparent. If you can't do it live, man, don't do it. So I just say thank you to everyone out there. Thank you to all of you. And let's have a beautiful day. Namaste. Namaste. So shall we sing? Shall we dance? Yes. I didn't say it, so. There we go. So this is the last week of the month that we're going to sing this closing song. Oh, that's right. And I had a great idea for the first, at the first week. I was like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna play, we're gonna play it kind of slow and like chill. And then we're going to, boom, we're going to go ahead and get all gospel with it. But um, I, don't, I feel like we didn't quite get there. But, so, that's okay. So since then, we've just kind of gone on one pace, and it's been really wonderful. I think everyone knows the song well now, so I have an, uh, I have, I would like to uh, have us sing it once, nice and slow, and like really kind of feel, feel the words of the song, and then we'll go in and like pick it up and, you know, rock it out a little bit. And I'll call out a word too on the repeat, to, so we'll switch it up a little bit. There's a song in my heart, it's been singing all my life. There's a voice in my body that is true. There is so much loving inside of me. Come up and let to the light, gonna open up and let it through. One, two, three, four. <laughs> 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 song in my heart, it's been singing all my life. There's a voice in my body that is true. I think we are definitely open up today. We have opened up our celestial, our mental gardens, and we have said yes. What did we say? Yes! I love it. So what I know is that this divine appointment is not over. It has just begun. And I am so in gratitude for each and every one of us, and I know that we take this power from ourselves out into our world, and most of all, we use it. Do we use it? Yes. yes! As we just release it to the law of my being, of your being, and we say it is all one. Together we say, and so it is. There's a song in my heart, it's been singing in all my life. There's a voice in my body that is true.
on his bed. All right. And I just, by the way, I just checked the uh, phone and Rita's got a message on there. <laughs> Attention, we have received the Rita text. She states she is not a fishwife and I am not a fisherman. For the record. For the record. <laughs> <laughs> 